from the quark to the supernova, the wonders do not cease. It is our attentiveness that is in short supply, our ability and willingness to do the work that awe requires. Still, I'm quite fond of our capacity for wonders. I give it four stars. So about twice a year, I find myself making the trip from Phoenix, Arizona to Omaha, Nebraska. It's 20 hours of driving through sparse Arizona forests, meandering Colorado roads, and extremely flat Nebraska plains. And I'll be honest, it's kind of a brutal trip. I usually split it up into 12 hours of driving one day and eight hours the next. And so as endless and as exhausting as the miles can feel, that biannual trip has become something I find myself looking forward to. And so in May of this year, I was on the road. And on a whim, I decided to try a new podcast, The Anthropocene Reviewed. Anthropocene. 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 The Anthropocene Reviewed. Anthro. About two episodes in, and I was totally enamored. The style, the content, John Green's complete and unapologetic lack of vocal inflection. For the rest of that trip, I listened to the entirety of the show, which amounts to 11.2 hours of content. You might be wondering why I'm giving so much background context. Isn't this supposed to be a review? And to that, I would answer. If there was anything I learned about my time with the Anthropocene Reviewed, it is that a review is not as much about a product as it is about a specific person's unique experience. A review captures a feeling, an interaction between the chemicals in my body and the frequencies and the light all around me. This is the story of a feeling inspired by a podcast. So last night I went for a skate. I've been re-listening to old episodes of the show to get ready for this video, and I was reminded of how I felt the first time I listened, of how much life there is all around me, of how much I take for granted every day, how much meaning there already is. I go about my days focused on the minute of life, or at least what we call life. Life is a broad term, almost as broad as the word love. Life could mean the homework I do, or the teeth I brush, or the push-ups I struggle through, but it can also refer to the subtle bliss of driving across the country, or the world-shattering calamity that is a breakup. Last 4th of July, I spent a night with some friends. We laid out on the driveway, ate cheap food, talked about high school drama, and watched the fireworks explode before being pelted by small, hot pieces of cardboard. Around 1 a.m. when everyone was heading home, I decided to take a drive. The streets were covered in a gray haze, the byproduct of a billion dollars spent on pyrotechnics. I felt as if I were on the set of a Hollywood horror film, but I just kept driving. I knew if I went home and just went to bed, I would wake up to another day of stuff to do and get pulled into my work. And there's nothing wrong with that. I love the work I do, but driving around the deserted streets, staying up late. It was a good kind of lonely. 99% of the time, I would tell you I do not like being alone. I'm a serial extrovert. My primary love language is quality time. And if you're watching this, I want to be your friend. Does anyone else like to feel sad? Some of my most precious memories are just being absolutely crushed by the weight of living, the power, of my own existence and the miraculous improbability of humanity. I like listening to sad music in a machine that moves too fast for my brain to comprehend in a darkness I'm meant to sleep through. I haven't quite figured out why those fleeting moments of silence are some of the times I feel most alive, but I have learned to seek them out. And I think that's why I love the Anthropocene reviewed so much. A show that can portray the majesty in the everyday and the irony in the grandiose is hard to come by. Back in May, when I binged the entire thing in two days, it wasn't enough. I wanted more. It's taken me the past few months to realize why a show this good can only exist for 20 minutes a month, because life must be lived for the creators and the consumers, for each side of a society on a polyhedron we call Earth, 
It's not enough to experience life secondhand. Life is meant to be experienced firsthand with eyes on a world illuminated by one single yellow dwarf star. That's it. It's just one star. I thank you for taking the time to watch this video and send you off with an infinitely recyclable piece of wisdom. Live your life. Live your life. Live your life. I give the Anthropocene Reviewed four stars.